When people talk about Atlantis, they usually refer to the writings of Plato, the Athenian philosopher who lived during the classical period in ancient Greece. According to Plato, 11,500 years ago, cataclysms ended a powerful civilization, which incidentally is the same time anthropologists recognize as the end of the Pleistocene and start of our current Holocene age. He stated that the capital city of this empire existed as an island nation located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, populated by a noble and powerful race. According to Rudolf Steiner, quote, the greatest part of the Atlantean population declined, and from a small portion are descended the so-called Aryans, who comprise present-day civilized humanity. It was said that the people of this land possessed great wealth thanks to the natural resources found throughout their island, and that it was a center for trade and commerce, which in modern terminology meant that it was a colonial empire, where the rulers of this land held sway over the people and land of their own island, as well as into Europe and Africa, and likely the Americas as well. This was the island of Atlantis, mythologically associated with Poseidon, god of the sea, who fell in love with a mortal woman, Clato, for whom he created a dwelling at the top of a hill near the middle of the island, and surrounded the dwelling with rings of water and land to protect her. Cleto gave birth to five sets of twin boys who became the first rulers of Atlantis. The island was divided among the brothers with the eldest, Atlas, first king of Atlantis, being given control over the central hill and surrounding areas. Plato was a student of Socrates until his death in 399 BC at the hands of the Athenian authorities. After his teacher's death, Plato traveled extensively, including journeys in Egypt, which is where this tale was preserved, etched in hieroglyphs on stone. Plato concedes that he learned the legend of Atlantis from Solon, who, in turn, got it from Egyptian priests who said that periodic global cataclysms set mankind back, causing civilized humanity to forget its own history, leaving it in a state of amnesia. In his work Critias, written around 360 BC, Plato reveals the description by the priests of ancient Egypt. Quote, you remember only one deluge, though there have been many. You and your fellow citizens are descended from the few survivors that remained, but you know nothing about it because so many succeeding generations left no record in writing. The change in the rising and setting of the sun and the other heavenly bodies, how in those times they used to set in the quarter where they now rise, and used to rise where they now set. Of all the changes which take place in the heavens, this reversal is the greatest and most complete. There is at this time great destruction of animals in general, and only a small part of the human race survives. Most mainstream geologists agree that the evidence is overwhelming that there was a massive global catastrophe around 10,000 BC that ended the last ice age and altered the face of the planet in almost every way. For the people alive at that time, it must have been an experience we can't imagine. The sea levels rising 300 feet in a relatively short period of time, submerging all beaches and coastal lands, torrential rainstorms measuring in feet instead of inches, worldwide hurricanes, super volcanic eruptions turning the sky black and blotting out the sun for months. The human survivors of this cataclysm would never have forgotten it and most certainly would have told their children and grandchildren about it. And those subsequent generations would have passed on the story to their own descendants. This memory endured to the present day to likely become our folk legends of the Great Flood or recorded in religions as a mighty deluge. That said, some still claim that the stories of cataclysms were not based on true events, but merely fantasy made up by Plato, and that an ancient global empire was never wiped out because it never existed, 
as the etymology of the word Atlantis is difficult to trace. But the truth is, he was not alone in using it. Herodotus was a well-respected historian a few decades before Plato was born, and in his Histories, Book 1, he refers to the sea beyond the Pillars of Hercules as the Sea of Atlantis. This rules out any assumption that Plato invented the word Atlantis. He also speaks of mountains called Atlas, as well as a river called Atlas, and of a people called Atlanteans. All of these names derive from Atlas, a titan of Greek mythology, but we also find the root word Atlan on the other side of the Atlantic with the Mayan culture. Azatlan is also the ancestral home of the Aztec people, who called themselves Mexica, where we get the modern word for Mexico, whose legends state that they originated from an island which has several theories attached to it, but has yet to be officially identified. The Mesoamerican legends of ancient white-bearded gods and serpent mythology becomes fascinating when considering other aspects of history presented by Plato on the other side of the Atlantic. In 590 BC, an Egyptian priest of very great age told a Greek statesman, Solon, an incredible tale of ancient empires, natural catastrophes, and a great Atlantean war. Quote, this power came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean, for in those days the Atlantic was navigable, and there was an island situated in front of the straits, which are by you called the Pillars of Hercules. The island was larger than Libya and Asia put together, and was the way to the other islands, and from these you might pass to the whole of the opposite continent which surrounded the true ocean. For this sea, which is within the Straits of Hercules, is only a harbor, having a narrow entrance. But that other is a real sea, and the surrounding land may be most truly called a boundless continent. Now, in this island of Atlantis, there was a great and wonderful empire, which had rule over the whole island and several others, and over other parts of the continent, and furthermore, the men of Atlantis had subjugated the parts of Libya within the columns of Hercules as far as Egypt and of Europe as far as Tyrania. This vast power, gathered into one, endeavored to subdue at a blow our country and yours and the whole of the region within the straits. And then, Solon, your country shone forth in the excellence of her virtue and strength among all mankind. She was preeminent in courage and military skill and was the leader of the Hellenes. And when the rest fell off from her, being compelled to stand alone after having undergone the very extremity of danger, she defeated and triumphed over the invaders and preserved from slavery those who were not yet subjugated and generously liberated all the rest of us who dwell within the pillars. But afterwards, there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men in a body sank into the earth, and the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared in the depths of the sea. For which reason, the sea in those parts is impassable and impenetrable, because there is a shoal of mud in the way, and this was caused by the subsidence of the island. Plato, 360 BC. Of course, Atlantis would not have been alone in meeting its destructive fate with global sea levels rising so abruptly. The legends of Easter Island speak of Hiva, which sank beneath the waves as people fled, while one Samoan legend calls a similar place Poluto. The Maoris of New Zealand still talk about arriving long ago from a sinking island called Hawaki, a vast and mountainous place on the other side of the water. The myths and traditions of India abound with references. The Rig Veda speaks of the three continents that were, 
The third was home to a race called the Danavas. A land called Rutas was an immense continent far to the east of India and home to a race of sun worshippers. But Rutas was torn asunder by volcanic upheaval and sent to the ocean's depths. Fragments remain as Indonesia and the Pacific Islands and a few survivors reached India. Hopi legends say that faced with disasters, some people hid inside the earth while others escaped by crossing the ocean on reed rafts, using the islands as stepping stones. The same story of escape to dry land appears in the Popo Vu, the mind story of creation. Indeed, the Hindus have many traditions of a paradisal region where mankind and civilization first originated. One such place was Tripura, the triple city, with metallic walls and golden palaces. The inhabitants of Tripura were originally extremely pious, but with the passage of time, they became evil and perverse and were destroyed by Shiva. This story mirrors the Atlantean tale of degradation of their civilization. But what exactly was their crime? What did the Atlantean race do that was considered so evil? Let us turn once again to Plato. Quote, For many generations, as long as the divine nature lasted in them, they were obedient to the laws and well affectioned towards the God whose seed they were. For they possessed true and in every way great spirits. However, the Atlanteans became corrupt. When the divine portion began to fade away, and became diluted too often and too much with the mortal admixture, and the human nature got the upper hand. They then, being unable to bear their fortune, behaved unseemly, and to him who had an eye to see, grew visibly debased. In an anthropological context, I've linked the Atlantean civilization with Cro-Magnon in the fossil record, and traced their descendants into the Holocene which is our present age. For more on this, I've included a link in the description to a popular video I made on the subject with over 2 million views called RH Negative Blood and Antediluvian Civilizations, as well as a more recent video I uploaded called Atlantis and the Lost Tribes. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon. My books make a great gift. If you'd like to support my work, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description section for those who are interested. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. I'd also like to extend my gratitude to those that have been sharing these videos as I rely on word of mouth and have been experiencing a degree of censorship from my accounts on social media. So thank you for that as well. I may also start doing some question and answer live streams soon as I've been getting a lot of requests for that and I receive too many questions to reply to each individually. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Please have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again soon.